Sunday, April 3rd. Uh, it's gonna be a good day today. Busy day. Uh, I'm gonna have lunch with my friend Koi Turnbull, comic book artist, and his girlfriend Yaz. Koi and I have been friends for a long time. And then I've got my comics class tonight, plus work. Work, of course. But yeah, it's gonna be good. Let's go. So I'm here with my friend Koi. Koi. Hey. Koi Turnbull. And Yaz. Say hi, Yaz. Hi. <laughs> uh, Koi is a comic book artist. You may have heard of his work if you're a fan of comic books. I met Koi, oh God, how long has it been now? Six, seven years? Seven years now. Is it really? I was doing comics by myself, kind of, in Lubbock. Well, I guess we had a small group of artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I found out that Koi Turnbull lives in my hometown. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, you want to hang out? <laughs> sure, why not? You want to hang out? How long have you been doing comic books? Uh, a little over 20 years now. Oh my gosh. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like, a, like 10, maybe. feels like it because I guess like when you when you first get in, you're, you're kind of like, you know what you want, you're, you're excited, you know, you don't even see the years go by. I know. But then when you start really getting into your craft, you know, like as in trying to tell a story correctly and all that other good stuff, or try to tell a story dynamically. Yeah. I think, and when, you, when you're aware of what you're doing, I think then you start adding the years. Because it's like, for instance, yeah, yesterday's panel, it was like, man, how many times have I joined this shop before, right? <laughs> but yet, yesterday's panel was the best time I've ever joined it. Oh. So it's like, you, you only, only then in those times that you start thinking to yourself, wow, how many years has it been? Because when you couldn't do it, you didn't want to add a year, you know. That's true, yeah. The, the anniversary year, you didn't care about that. And you're just like looking for every, you know, like how to draw a book and mm -hmm. how, like, I me. need somebody to show me how Still to do me. this panel, you know. Mm -hmm. When you're, you've are you been doing it for a while, you just do it. You just do it. You and don't I, look I, it up, you just get it done. I think, I think it's, it's more like when you have a firm understanding of your structure, when structure is not your issue any longer, I think then you start to have fun. And I think it's only then that you start to really tell a story because when someone tells you camera angles, camera angles are, are this perspective shot or that, it sounds like jargon to, yeah. the, to the comic, you know, to a person who's not into comics or not, you know, working in art, period. But when you're not concentrated on that any longer and suddenly it's just about, okay, what's the time of day? What's the um, mood that I'm trying to, trying to describe? That's when fun, that's when it starts to get fun. Because you're not worried about, okay, does the eye look right here? Or does the yeah. finger, is the fingernail in there correctly? You're not worried about that any longer. I was, I was talking to, you, I don't know if you ever met Derek Fleece from mm -hmm. Beckham Lubbock. Okay, mm -hmm. my friend Derek, uh, he said he went to Dallas Fan Expo this mm -hmm. past weekend mm -hmm. and showed his portfolio and all the pages he's working on for his own creator own comic, mm -hmm. showed it to like 10 different artists mm -hmm. and every artist gave him a different like set of advice and yeah, they completely man. contradict each other like they're like uh you need to stop practicing anatomy you just need to do you and then somebody else is like you need to work on anatomy because right. this isn't working and then somebody else is like uh you need to build an audience you don't need to think about you know and that's a different stage <clears throat> that they're in right yeah and they've got different priorities mm -hmm. and my advice was i think you're at the stage where you need to stop listening to people and just yeah, do the work and just do the work <laughs> yeah man you know it's funny because uh only recently has has just do the work been like a mantra oh, to yeah. me. Like before, it was like, man, how do I figure this? Now it's what time is it? Ten o'clock. Let's just get in. And it's and it's like I said. Now it's at a point where I don't even concentrate on what I'm drawing any longer. Huh. It's like if I if I want the mood, like Jim Lee has this because uh, she put me on some Jim Lee uh, tutorials lately, right? Yeah. And. He said something in the first tutorial. I was only I only watched like two or three. Yeah. But they're they're good. 
the first one he says uh, something that I should have learned like 20 years ago, which was he goes when he after he gets his initial you know rough drawing down. So I mean, this is a process that I do too. I've been doing it, but it's, I guess not to his degree. Um, I, I basically he would he would uh, draw real loose on the you know the initial drawing and all that good stuff. But then he would go in and just drop shadows. Now to the average artist, that's like common sense. But for me working on a comic book that's not exactly common sense huh. and only only because he was talking about speeding up and i never use that to speed things up huh. but also by doing that you stop concentrating on where is the eye where is this where is that it's now just okay now where is the of, eye on the figure or the eye on the reader an eye on the in both cases like <clears throat> you're trying to figure out perspective for instance where is the eye right well now it's intuitive okay i want I want, for me, when I'm trying to figure out a camera angle, I'm trying to figure out where is the reader. If the eye is here, for instance, then I need to make sure that the reader feels like as if he's inside of that, That's that shot. Good. Now, I used to think about that all the time. Like when I would do my layouts, where's the shot? Where's the eye? Where's the eye? Now, I don't even think about it. Huh. It's more like, what's the mood that we're trying to do? I know, uh, I know, I know in Storyboard, they talk a lot about um, to not think about doing shots, but mm -hmm. to think of your of the camera mm -hmm. as a person, mm -hmm. yeah, as its own character. Point. Right. Yep. So, what is the what is this character experiencing through the camera? Like, mm -hmm. how tall are they? How you know, what kind of emotional um, frame are they in when they're moving this camera around, or mm -hmm. are they very stable because they've got it set in one place, and, mm -hmm. or, or are they jumping all over the place? And, and it's important to think about that when you're staging a shot for storyboarding mm -hmm. and for comic books. Mm -hmm. So you're not all over the place all unless over the place unless it's supposed to be that way for the story to help right. the story. Because it, because the entire point is that the reader has to feel like as if they're going through this adventure with you, yeah. you know, the writer or the, uh, or the artist. So it's like if you take them out of the shot. You're, you're at risk of taking them also out of the story. Huh. So it's like, for me, when I'm drawing or when I'm laying out the book, for instance, I'm thinking to myself, what's the coolest angle at yeah. times, right? Not because um, I just want to just draw this cool shots and all that stuff. It's more like I want, when a person is going to a comic shop and picking up, picking up a book for the first time, I want them to flip and wow, what happened before that? And then <laughs> right? once I that's get good. that question, that's it. I've already gotten to buy the book. So. <laughs> So you're not thinking about like uh, I want to draw a page that's so pretty I want people to stop and frame it on the wall. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those days are done. <laughs> those, those days are done. Because, uh, because like when when I was concentrating on that, yeah, I was slowing down. You know, because you're you're constantly and it's never to, good enough. It's never good enough. <laughs> because you, like for me, I remember when I first got into the game, it was about trying to trying to draw like Alfonso Mucha on every mm. single page, and I'm. Alfonso Mucha wasn't doing Alfonso Mucha every now single he, day. Yeah. So it's like that's an, that's an unfair... But he also trained for 20, 30 years before he became Alfonso Mucha. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I think that's the biggest thing that most artists, most beginning artists need to realize is that, you know, it's a process. Yeah. You start at one, but then eventually you get to 100. But you don't jump in at 100. And I think it's the same thing when you're, um, when you're laying out pages or when you're, um, you know, designing a book is that we all know that there's 22 pages and we all just want the, the full 22 page book with the cover yeah but you have to understand that this is a process and it takes time to get to the 22nd page but if you pace yourself if you pace yourself that 22nd page will probably be the best page and it will be handed in on time too hmm. so it's just a matter of pacing um neil adams said it best it was that if you have enough people around you to help you get to your goal you'll get to your goal his thing was you know I have to direct everybody who's around me huh. right and I remember the first time he said it to me I was like oh, that's interesting I never never heard that before yeah. directing people around you but to a degree that is what it is <laughs> because you can't when you're, when you're designing a book 22 pages per month or, or every six weeks or whatever it's if you don't have certain things set up outside of drawing the book mm -hmm. Those outside forces will attack the book eventually mm. because you schedule and a, oh, yeah. something will happen and then you got to go handle it. Or, most of being an artist is learning time management. <laughs> and 90% 90, 90 staying off week. the internet. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that this week, actually. Yeah. When I first heard about your work, you were working on uh, 
we're going to Aspen with Michael Turner mm. on, on Fathom. Mm -hmm. And I just heard about you. I, I didn't actually know no, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we didn't yeah. meet till like 10 years later, 12 years later. Mm -hmm. That was, honestly, that was probably the biggest learning curve ever because uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to draw cool things all the time. <laughs> but I didn't know what I was doing. And the work showed it. Hmm. Um, the camera angles were always interesting, but the camera angles were also always also so close. Oh you yeah, know, to the viewer. I think that's so, a problem most artists starting out is that they mm. are way too close when they're framing a shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Coin. Yes, for coming thank to visit. You. I had a good time. And we had yeah, such a fun good time. time. That was a lot of fun. I want to thank Coin Yes for coming out and Coy doing the interview with me. And I hope you guys out there watching got a lot out of it. Uh, he's man, he's got a lot of experience. He's got a lot of advice to offer. And uh, hopefully, I'll have him back. You know, I want to maybe do like a Q and A video, put a call out for questions to you guys, and then have him come back and maybe even do something at his studio or my studio or something. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. And if you want to learn more about Koi's work, you could follow him on Instagram at Cartoon Realism or KoiTurnbull.com. Or just search for, search for Koi Turnbull on Facebook. Uh, he's he's got a lot of good artwork out there. It was fun taking him on the lot and showing him around. Uh, I took him to the Warner Brothers Museum where he saw the Batman stuff and the Water Tower. Uh, I think the tours are available on the Warner Brothers website if you're interested. It's only like 50 bucks or something if you're ever there, ever in Burbank or Southern California. It's a lot of fun. I recommend it. And they also have like a bat lot, back lot tour where they show all the lots and. Uh, it's it's really neat. I've actually taken it a couple times myself. <laughs> Alright, I gotta get to class. I realized that I have this habit of putting off doing my pages for class until like the Sunday, the day before class. And then Sunday comes around and I end up like having to watch the baby and clean house and you know chores and stuff and I just never get around to actually doing the pages for my class and it's really frustrating. And I didn't even go to class last week because I was embarrassed. I hadn't done anything. I hadn't addressed any of the notes that they'd given me. And they were really good notes, really useful notes. Instead of going to class, I basically just stayed and just kept working on pages. I even took the whole day off so I could work on pages for class. And I just got intimidated, let myself psych myself out. It was bad. So even though I don't have much this week, I'm going anyways. I'm going to take my lumps see what kind of feedback they got on a little, you know, I basically just reworked three pages. And so I'm gonna see what, what everybody has to say and see, <sighs> just suck it up. <laughs> I think that's it for this video. I don't think I'm gonna show anything at class, but thank you guys for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Keep smiling.